Hello everyone, it's Annie and today I'm here with my April wrap up. So I read 22 books this month, which is a massive increase from the last couple months of the year. So that's interesting. I don't know what to think about that. But the average rating was okay. It was 3.83. So I definitely had some good ones in there and some really bad ones. <laughs> so let's start with the really bad ones. Um, I DNF'd one book in April, which was Power of Babel or Babel. This is an older, published in the early 2000s, nonfiction about linguistics, and it was just not great. Um, I majored in linguistics in college, so a lot of, like, all of the information was just stuff that I already knew but it wasn't really portrayed in an interesting way that like people who don't know about linguistics would like, I think. It was just very boring. And also, I don't know, the author said like some weird things that just rubbed me the wrong way. So I was just like, you know what? I'll find a different linguistics nonfiction book to read because this month was Linguathon. So a lot of these books are translated fiction or about language. So speaking of translated fiction, um, I rated Untold Night and Day by Besua only two stars, which was really disappointing because this was a book that I had been wanting to read for a really long time. And it's just so, I don't know, it's so inviting and pleasing and it's super short and I thought it was going to be really good and I was going to love it, but I didn't. On the back, someone says that it is a Lynchian triumph, as in David Lynch, and I think that that's definitely the case, but more so like the Twin Peaks sequel series that nobody likes rather than the original Twin Peaks. Um, it was confusing and didn't really have that much of a plot. There was a lot of weird stuff going on in here. I did not understand it at all. I don't know what point they were trying to make and I think that a lot of the problem is that the prose in here, this is translated, but the prose in here is quite experimental so I think it might be the case that it was just a lot of translation difficulty um, I haven't read the book in Korean, so if anyone has, you can let me know if that's the case. But yeah, sadly, this was a disappointment for me. And then the second two-star I read was Snow Country by Yasunari Kawabata. This was for the prompt a classic in translation. This is a Japanese classic, I think published in the 60s or the 40s or something like that, about a man who goes to this snowy town, this onsen town in northern Japan, and has an affair with a geisha at this bathhouse. The prose was really beautiful, I will have to say that. It was beautifully, beautifully written, and I think that's probably most of why people like it so much. Um, because, I don't know, it was just like this guy and this geisha talking, and then her being like, oh, like, you know, I I like you but like I can't do this and then leaving and then coming back and doing that over and over again <laughs> so it really was not my kind of story but you know a, a Japanese classic I'm glad I read it and then we have the bread the devil need which I rated 2.5 stars this was for my women's prize for fiction vlog which should be coming out either next or after one more video I am editing it at the moment actually and I'm really excited for you to all watch it um, so I won't be talking about it much here, but this book was just really disturbing. It was about a woman going through a lot of abuse in her life, and it wasn't really enjoyable to read, which is why I rated it low, but I understand its importance. It was just kind of a difficult read. And now for the three stars. We have My Brilliant Life by Aeon Kim. I wanted to like this a whole lot more than I did, but three stars wasn't bad. Um, this is about a boy living in poverty in Seoul with his parents who had him very, very young as teenagers. But the story of this boy is that he's really sick with this disease that makes him age super, super fast. So there's a lot of 
interesting talks about age and maturity and things like that, especially because his parents had him so young. It was definitely a unique story, but it wasn't that enjoyable <laughs> like for me to read personally. Um, I think a lot of people might like this. It's definitely more literary. So if you're into literary fiction, definitely give this a try. It was not my style, but I definitely see the appeal. And then for a book that I read in the sapphic reading vlog that just came out, we have I Am the Ghost in Your House by Mara Vesco Moore. Uh, this is about a girl named Pi who lives in other people's houses because she and her mom are invisible. So she can go wherever she wants and the story is that she wants to go back to Pittsburgh because she fell in love with a girl in Pittsburgh whose house she once stayed at. This book, I won't say too much because again, it's in my vlog, which I'll have linked up there, but it was quite different from what I expected. I thought it was going to be a horror book, but it ended up being more contemporary fantasy, um, which could have been good if it was what I was expecting because it wasn't really marketed that way, but I thought it was cute and good for what it was. And then we have another three stars, which was Penance by Kane Minato. And I loved her other book, which is Confessions. I loved it, I loved it. She is such a great Japanese horror, psychological thriller writer, but this book just kind of missed the mark for me. It's about this group of girls who one day while in like elementary school, older elementary school, they're playing in the schoolyard and this man comes up and asks them to help him. He's disguising himself as like a maintenance man. So one of the girls goes to help him with whatever he wants them to do, and he ends up murdering her. And these girls that were left, that used to be her friend, now are kind of dealing with the consequences of this horrific crime happening to their friend. And I just, I thought it, wasn't as successful as it could have been. I really loved Confessions. I did not love this. I was expecting a little bit more from this author, unfortunately. And then the last three stars was A Song of Silver and Gold by Mel Caribbean. This I also read for my sapphic reading vlog. Um, this is a retelling of The Little Mermaid. And it is sapphic. It follows a pirate who hunts sirens and then a siren who turns into a human to complete her own mission. And the pirate is like princess in disguise as a boy to be a pirate captain, so that's really cool. It had a lot of really cool elements. I just thought that, especially the ending, I really wish was developed more. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, if, if it was just meteor and developed more, it would have been so great. But as it is right now, I really did enjoy it. And the beginning especially really sucked me in. The best thing about it was the characters. The characters I thought were really well fleshed out and there was a lot of great side characters as well. So it's just a fun, entertaining LGBT retelling. And now for the 3.5 stars, we have One for All by Lily Lanoff, which is a Three Musketeers retelling. Lots of retellings in, the, <laughs> in this month. Um, this is a really interesting concept. It follows a girl who has a disability, I think it's called POTS, and she is raised by her father who was a musketeer, so she is a fencer and like a really strong-willed girl, um, but then one day her father is murdered and she has to like go avenge him. And I thought the main character, that that girl was really well written. She was really strong, very well-developed character. I don't think the writing itself was that great, to be honest. And the romance, like the weird romances were kind of like, they just rubbed me the wrong way. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't really like the whole romances and it was kind of predictable, but Oh well, there was a <laughs> there was a sapphic side romance which was great. <laughs> um, so yeah, maybe that influenced my writing. I don't know, <laughs> but I it was really successful, and I think we definitely need more retellings about disabled characters. Um, so I thought it was really successful in that sense. 
And then another women's prize book, we have Sorrow and Bliss, which I also gave 3.5 stars. It was not what I usually would read, but it was, it had a really interesting conversation about mental health. The main character was insufferable. I hated her, but I think that was the point. She's like a 40 year old woman whose marriage is falling apart and she's super unhappy and she then goes to a psychiatrist and gets a diagnosis, which is never named in the book. It's just not named. Um, but it has a lot of interesting conversations, like I said, about mental health and your responsibility to still not be a horrible person, even if you're mentally ill, and not use that as an excuse to treat people badly. I thought it had a lot of nuanced stuff to say about that. It also had really, really interesting character relationships, especially between the main character and her immediate family, like her sister and her two parents. I thought that was really, really interesting. So definitely check out my vlog for more thoughts on this one. Now for the four star reads. First, we have The Way Spring Arrives, which is a anthology of short stories that are both sci-fi and fantasy short stories and some essays. Um, the essays were my favorite part of the book, actually. <laughs> this was the first book I read this month, so hopefully I can remember <laughs> a lot of what I want to say, but it is by Chinese authors and they're all women or non-binary, which I thought was great. The stories I remember the most were actually the essays about translating Chinese literature and just sci-fi in Chinese literature in general, and also women authors in China. I thought there were really interesting things to say there, especially about pronoun usages, because in Chinese, the third person pronoun is ta, and there's no difference between he and her, except in writing, and this was brought about after um, some contact with Europe, I believe. I'm not like super well versed in Chinese history, but it's the same pronoun. So like, there's a lot of interesting things to say about whether some, old stories in Chinese history were actually about non-binary people, perhaps, and that was super fascinating. There was also a really great essay about these stories that Chinese women have been writing and publishing online themselves, like to read for free, and then subsequently getting published and even getting like Netflix adaptations and stuff, and how a lot of those stories center around queer characters, and that was just super fascinating to read. And I will also say R.F. Kuang has a really interesting essay, and she also translated one of these stories, I think the title story. Um, so definitely check this book out. It was so fascinating, and I'm so glad I read it. And then we have Travelers Along the Way by Mina May Safi, which I also read for my Safi reading vlog. This is a, another retelling of Robin Hood. And this takes place in the Third Crusade, following a Muslim main character, her sister, and a bunch of other travelers they meet along the way. <laughs> so it's a found family book. There's also a sapphic romance that's pretty front and center. Um, it was just really, really entertaining, very fast paced, very action packed. And I thought all of the characters had a really great personality that were really distinct. Um, and just fun to read. Like this was just a fun read, something that I always looked forward to. I have the physical copy, but I also listen to the audiobook sometimes, which is also really great. And it was just something that I really enjoyed reading, very entertaining. Um, so if you're looking for a really good, um, fresh take on a retelling of like a really old story like Robin Hood, definitely check this one out. I think it's really underrated. And then another four star, we have This Rebel Heart by Catherine Locke. And this book is YA. It's pretty long though. It's almost 500 pages. This is about the Hungarian uprising or revolution during the 1950s. I knew nothing about this historical event at all before reading this and I learned so, so much. So this is after obviously World War II and Nazi Germany and things like that. This has a Jewish main character, by the way, and then the Soviets come in and basically occupy Hungary. The history in this was so fascinating. I loved the main character whose name is Chula. She's also part of a polyamorous triplet, triplet, whatever you call it, um, which was great. I thought that 
that should really be part of the marketing because I did not know that this had polyamory in it. This is actually misshelved on Goodreads. I know I said that this was book that this book was sapphic because on Goodreads it is labeled as such, but it is not. Um, the polyamory is between two guys and the girl named Chila, so that was wrong, <laughs> but it was still really great queer representation. I loved this. I have a lot to say um, though because I wanted this to be five stars so badly. The writing itself was gorgeous, such amazing prose, but there were fantastical elements in there which I do like historical fantasy, but I felt like it was a little bit unbalanced. There was a whole thing about colors fading from Hungary once the Soviets arrived and it just felt kind of unnecessary. Um, there was also the river being magical and then one of the people in the polyamorous thruplet being an angel. I don't know, I feel like it either, like the fantasy either needed to be a way bigger part of the book or just cut out entirely. As it was, it felt a little unbalanced, but I did really enjoy reading it overall. And then the last four star was Ice Palace by Tarje Vesas. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, this is a translated classic, I think from Norwegian, and it was super short, really weird. Um, this is about a young girl who meets a new girl at school and they become really close friends and have like this weird close connection really quickly. But then the new girl disappears one night in the snow in this ice palace that's like basically a, a maze of frozen waterfall. It had amazing descriptions of winter and snow, which is what you would expect from a Norwegian author, I suppose. Um, it was published in the 60s, so I don't know, the, the tone felt a little bit old-fashioned, but I really loved the writing itself. And I also really liked how the central mystery of what their connection meant and what the girl's secret was that she told to the surviving girl before she got lost in the snow. I thought that was really well done because it was not revealed in the end and it makes you wonder like well what was the secret like why is it so important that this surviving girl doesn't tell the secret of her new friend um, so that was really interesting and it made you think so if you are at all intrigued by it I definitely recommend you to give it a try it was also a really quick read I read it in like a day so definitely pick this one up and now for the 4.5 reads. First we have Iraqi Nights, which was the Found in Translation book club pick for April. It is a poetry book, so not what I usually read, but I really, really liked it. There were some poems that were more successful than others, which is why it's a 4.5, And but I really loved it. I thought it was great. Um, we're going to have a live show for it. May 3rd, I think, is the first Tuesday of May. Um, over on Noelle's channel, I think. Um, so I'll have her linked down below and I'll also have our other co-host Brittany linked down below. So I'm definitely looking forward to talking about this and discussing it. I have a bunch of poems written down that I really liked from it. It has a lot to do with the Iraqi war and imperialism and things like that. So I thought it was really, really a successful book of poetry. Very beautiful. Okay, we're almost done. <laughs> I really have to stop reading so much. Um, next, 4.5 is Embassy Town by China Mieville, which has been on my TBR for like five years, <laughs> and I finally read it because it is the sci-fi centering around language as a plot device. And oh my god, it was amazing. <laughs> I loved it so much. So it's a little convoluted, and to be honest, I didn't understand anything that was going on until about the 40% mark, and then everything just clicked, and I fell in love with it. So you have to really stick with it <laughs> for a little bit before the payoff. But basically, there are these aliens that humanity has colonized the planet of, and these aliens have two mouths. So their language, oh, this is so fascinating. Their language has like both of their mouths speaking simultaneously, which is so cool. And just Chen and Yevil's mind, like, thank you for blessing us with this. So the deal is that humanity has to have these ambassadors to these aliens that can speak to them. 
So they have these people who like are either siblings or twins or have like this really strong bond and they learn to speak their language simultaneously with each other and oh it's so cool. <laughs> the only thing that I thought was not my favorite about this book was actually the main character who is this woman who is not an ambassador but she's just there. I don't know. I felt like because she wasn't an ambassador she was a little bit outside of the story which can work sometimes but I just feel like maybe it would have been better if she was a little bit more involved. And also a lot of the story was taken up by her just like having sex with all these random people and it's like that's if that's her proclivity, that is great and I support her, but I don't really want to read about it like every other chapter. It just got boring after a while <laughs> um, because that wasn't the point of the book at all. But other than that, that's why it's a 4.5 and not a 5 because other than that, this really was such a fascinating book with really, really great, unique and interesting concepts about language. Okay, so now we're getting into the five stars. I have six five stars here, which actually I was surprised about <laughs> looking at my spreadsheet here. I was really excited to see that I read so many five stars in April. So first we have Land of Big Numbers, which is a short story collection by Tipping Chen. I loved this so much. It was absolutely phenomenal. It's about China, obviously, and it had so much political commentary. It was just amazing, wonderfully done. Um, each story follows the life of one individual pretty much and there were just some amazing stories in there. Like there was one about a group of people who are stuck in a subway platform because a train is late or something and they're not allowed to leave by the guards. And they just stay there for months and months, like waiting for permission to leave that they're never going to get. Just had so much interesting commentary about government and things like that. There were also stories about political activists, um, a stock market manager, all kinds of people. And each story was so fascinating in its own way. Please read this, like don't sleep on this book. <laughs> it is so good. One of my favorites this month for sure. And then I have Mastering the Art of Soviet Cooking, which is a food memoir that I buddy read with Gloria, whose channel I'll have linked down below. Gloria is such a lovely person. Definitely check out her channel. Um, this is a memoir about a woman who grew up in Moscow and she immigrated to America with her mother um, during like the Soviet Union. And it was definitely really interesting. There was a lot of history that I learned about. Really disturbing sometimes because there was a lot of talk about famine, food scarcity, um, like um, the mother one day going to the market and trying to buy meat. And the only meat she had access to choose from was either otter or whale. And there weren't even any bags for her to use to take it home. She just had to carry it in her hands like it, it was really disturbing so yeah definitely an amazing book if you want to learn more about russian food first of all and also just soviet history in general which i personally find really fascinating and then we have a graphic novel actually which i don't read that many of this is almost american girl by robin ha which is a story of a korean girl who immigrates to America forcibly. Um, her mother says that they're just going on a trip to Alabama, but it ends up that they're actually moving there. So she doesn't want to move there and she feels really betrayed. Um, her relationship with her mother is really upsetting and her story about growing up in Korea versus her life in America is definitely, it pulls on your heartstrings. <laughs> um, the art is beautiful. And Robin is such a strong young girl and it kind of talks about her getting to know herself as well as American culture and it was so so good. I'm so glad I picked this up. It was just on a whim and I really loved it so I definitely recommend this and since it's a graphic novel it's a super quick read. And then we have Word Slut by Amanda Montel, who you might have heard about from Cultish, which was her newest release. This is a nonfiction book about language and linguistics, and I loved it. This is about feminism taking back the English language, which is the tagline of it, but it's really about so much more than that. It's about how we all use language 
subconsciously in a patriarchal society like how insults and nicknames and just words we use every day are based on the patriarchy and oh, it's so fascinating um it's really really so fascinating like i can't go into all the details here because we'll be here forever but i really really implore you to pick up this book if you're at all interested in linguistics I really, really highly recommend this. It was fascinating. And even me, I majored in linguistics, I learned something new, so definitely highly recommend this one. And then we have The Sentence by Louise Erdrich, which I won't go into too much because she's in my Women's Prize for Fiction vlog, but this was so good. This follows an Ojibwe woman who is living her life and she kind of gets into a lot of trouble in the beginning. It's not a spoiler to say um, she goes and steals the body of someone's boyfriend for her, but ends up getting put in jail because that is a crime. Um, so yeah, that's not a spoiler, but her life definitely takes a turn for the better. Um, she ends up working in a bookshop that is haunted, and that is like the big setting of the book. The book also takes place during the first months of the coronavirus pandemic, so yeah, it's a little bit disturbing. Um, it deals with also um, the Black Lives Matter movement and police brutality, so definitely be warned about that um, if you're sensitive to it, but it was so good. Louise Erdrich is an amazing, amazing writer. I will definitely be reading her other book, which I think is called The Night Watchman. I absolutely need to read more of her works. She was amazing and I really hope this wins the women's prize. <laughs> and the last and my favorite book of this month is A Magic Steeped in Poison by Judy Eileen. I loved this so much. I'm so happy because this was one of my most anticipated reads of the year, mostly because of its gorgeous cover, <laughs> but the inside is just as beautiful as the cover, I promise. This follows a girl named Ning who is sent to participate in this magical tea brewing competition um, because tea in this world, oh, so fascinating, tea is a magic and depending on the type of tea leaves you use and the mixture of them, you can do different types of magical things. So fascinating, such an amazing magic system. I loved it so much. Um, there is a central murder mystery going on because Ning's mother was in the past poisoned by poisoned tea leaves. She comes from her rural village to the capital for this competition to try and figure out who sent these poisoned tea leaves. And it is so fascinating. I love it. it. It was so good. It had me gripped throughout the whole entire book. It was just so good. Um, really fun. There was a romance, but it didn't really take away from anything and it didn't overshadow anything important. And there was also, oh, there's also a character I absolutely love who I believe is going to be kind of the main focus of the second book in this duology, which is the princess and her bodyguard. I love them. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to reading the second one of this duology. I really highly recommend this. And with that, we are done with this very long wrap up. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Definitely let me know what your favorite read of April was. I'm very interested to know. And if you read any of these books, let me know your thoughts. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel for more bookish videos. And I'll see you next time. Bye.